vector conjecture and application to cluster algebra. Tony, please. Uh, thank you very much, Jan, for the introduction. It's my great honor to speak at the M seminar uh, of the Kansas State University. Uh, I hope you all see my screen yes. and also my cursor. Yeah. You see. Okay. And uh, so in the chat, you find the notes. You can uh, look at the notes during the talk. Um, and please don't hesitate to interrupt whenever you like, uh, if you have any questions or any remarks. So the title of my talk is Frobenius Structure Conjecture and Application to Cluster Algebras. It's based mainly on the, this preprint joint with Jean Kiel. Uh, if time permits, I will say something more about the second uh, preprint joint with uh, Paul Hacking and Jean Kiel. Um, here is the plan of my talk. I will begin by introducing the Frobenius structure conjecture, and then I will explain uh, how to construct structure constants of the mirror algebra. Uh, after that, I will explain uh, an application to cluster algebras. And at the end, if time permits, I will explain an application to the study of moduli space of Calabria pairs. Um, you see the last line in Zoom. Uh, yeah, yes. I mean, the last line with, with applications to moduli space yes. of Calabria, yeah, that's uh, okay. Yes, that's great, thank you. Um, so let's start with uh, the first uh, part. Uh, what is Frobenius structure conjecture? Um, the motivation comes from mirror symmetry, which is a conjectural duality between Calabial varieties. So uh, roughly, mirror symmetry says that for any Calabial variety X, uh, there is some mirror Calabial variety X check, such that there are lots of uh, geometric relations between them involving a, a lot of different geometric structures such as Hodge, uh, Hodge theory, goromov witten invariance, Fukaya category, derived category of coherent shifts, and so on. Lots of geometric relations in short. And the, the one question is, uh, given a Calabria variety X, uh, how do we find the mirror Calabria variety X check? So by the mirror symmetry philosophy, uh, one may build the mirror X check by counting curves in X. Um, in general, it's quite complicated to explain what the curves to count, but uh, uh, we have uh, uh, the so-called- Well, well, well it's, sort, it's sort of- large oversimplification than just by counting of curves you can build the mirror. Yes, yes. And I will make a further simplification, uh, which is uh, the Frobenius structure conjecture of a gross hacking cure. So in general, from counting curves to build the mirror, it's a lot of steps. But uh, the Frobenius structure conjecture of gross hacking cure is a really simple and a precise formulation uh, for this philosophy. So uh, is a, the Frobenius structure conjecture of gross hacking kill is a precise yet a simple formulation of this philosophy for log Calabria varieties, uh, which boils down to intricate relations of counts of rational curves. Um, so now uh, let me explain what is their conjecture. And, uh... Uh, Tony, before you started to explain mm -hmm. uh, uh, the conjecture, uh, what do you call a mirror dual in this case? Because as far as I understand, it's kind of you're working with non-compact Calabiao, so you should say 
what do you understand by the dual so in here when i say calabria it's uh, quite vague and later we restrict to log calabria so when we take a mirror it will it's also log calabria that's okay but when you write you, when you say that the pre ah, precise formulation does it mean the definition of x check so i'm a bit confused because you know people here there are symplectic topologists which think that kind of in, in spirit of homological mirror symmetry like you should assign two categories but first you should declare de define the sex check somehow yes. to construct so here, here somehow the frobenius structure conjecture of gross hacking kill is a precise definition of x ah, check. Def okay def it's a definition okay it's good. a precise construction of x check which should imply all other uh, subtle things like equivalence of Fukaya and derived category of coherence sheets. Yeah. Yeah, these are further properties okay. of their yeah. construction. But right. first of all, the conjecture is the construction. Sorry, Tony. Uh, yes. I, I actually have some confusion on this. I, so uh, we, we actually know, like in this case, we know like how to build up the uh, like a mirror manifold of the given Columbia variety, right? But uh, I don't think that quite really satisfied the uh, you know homological mirror symmetry. I, I think what, it's quite, it's still like different, right? What do you mean? We know, uh, like, uh, like in this case, right? You said okay, so in the following, you're gonna you're gonna build up, you're gonna construct a mirror Columbia variety. Yes, right. But uh, I I I just wanna kind of make a remark that it's still kind of different from really just giving a, a like a something which satisfies the homological mirror symmetry. I think there is still some like a gap there, right? It's not like it's just, okay, I, I can construct a mirror manifold by using this like a algebra, algebraic stuff and then it satisfies the homological mirror symmetry automatically, right? It's no, not. it doesn't. It's uh, it, first it's a construct. So we start with X, right. first step, we construct X check. And then maybe you want to ask uh, whether there are any mirror relations you want to check. Right, right, something and like that's that. That's the further question. And the one can try, try to check all different kind of quantities. So then basically that's a way to define uh, this X check. Yeah. It's so for the moment, this GHK is for construction of X check. Okay, yeah, fine. Um, so let's continue. Um, yeah, so, yeah, but uh, that's motivation, the construction of S X check. And uh, what I want, the one idea I want to convey in my talk is that uh, this uh, construction of X check already has a lot of applications. One I will explain is application to cluster algebras, and another is to the moduli space of uh, Calabria pairs. So we will see, I mean, uh, uh, we will see uh, what, uh, what's the use of this. So let me first explain uh, what the curves do we count. Uh, here is our setup. So we fix any field of characteristic zero. You can just take the field of complex numbers, uh, but our theory is algebraic. Uh, any field of characteristic zero is good. And then um, we take an affine smooth log Calabria variety over K. Log Calabria uh, means that all log pluri canonical bundles are trivialized by the tensor power of uh, some volume form. Um, excuse me, may, may I ask you what is a log pluricanonical bundle? I'm not that much of algebraic. I know what's a canonical bundle is, but what uh, log pluricanonical? I mean, you don't have to explain uh, in detail, but to give a hint. So what? Yeah, so uh, one way to define it is one take any compactification and then one can consider log forms. And the one 
show that the notion of log forms is independent of the compactification. Uh, and plurie means? A plurie just means the form of the. Ah, okay. Uh, uh, right. So canonical, yeah. so first canonical bundle means we take a wedge, top wedge product. Yeah, yeah. And, and the plurie means that we take a further more tensor product. Okay, okay. Yeah, yes. all right, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thank but you. Uh, you can just, uh, one, it's a bit confusing if the first if it's the first time you see the definition. Uh, one uses this definition to get rid of something we don't want, uh, but uh, uh, you can just think of uh, as some open Calabria override, like non-compact. Because for Calabria, we only ask for the canonical bundle to be trivial, but uh, here we ask a bit more. And then, uh, so we have a log Calabria, and then we consider SKUZ to be the set of integer points in the essential skeleton of U. So this is an intrinsic construction uh, by Bayakovich and then by in the paper of Kondasevich Soboman. Um, but we have a very explicit, if you don't know what it is, uh, we have a very explicit uh, uh, description of these integer points, which is just uh, zero uh, union multiples of uh, divisorial valuation on uh, on the field of rational functions on our log Calabria, uh, where omega has a pole. Uh, a in pole, other words, pole of any order. Uh, I remember that for essential skeleton. I mean, it should correspond to what we did with Maxim. It should be kind of poles of order one or something like that. Yes. So here, automatically, omega can only have a uh, simple pose. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, and uh, so in other words, if you don't like the word divisorial evaluation, it just means that uh, uh, for some compactification, it's given by a divisor, and we ask that omega has a, uh, has a pole at that divisor. So it's just a given by zero union multiples of some so-called essential divisor. So now uh, we fix a projective normal crossing compactification u uh, y of u with complement denoted by d. So uh, here is a picture of the things we consider. We have a log Calabria u, and we take a compactification y such that the complement of u is normal crossing. This is our setup, just uh, log Calabria and uh, the integer points. And now let me explain what are the rational curves we count. So we are given some integer points in the essential skeleton, Pj, and we are also given a curve class, beta. Beta lies in the cone of effective curves uh, you can just think of it as a homology class. And now I want to associate a count to this data. Um, so, so since uh, I just explained this uh, explicit description of uh, integer points, um, we write every integer point as a multiple of some divisor of divisorial valuation, and then we assume that each divisorial valuation is actually given by some divisor, dj, by some component of d, which is always possible after a blow up. So now we define our count, eta p beta, our count of rational curves, eta p beta, uh, to be simply the number of closed rational curves in Y of class beta that intersect every such divisor dj with order mj mm -hmm. uh, for every uh, non-zero pj. Um, here's the picture. So say we have three integer points 
P1, P2, P3, and uh, they correspond to uh, three divisors, D1, D2, D3, with multiplicities M1, M2, M3. And we just want to count the number of rational curves in Y uh, of given class beta, such that every uh, PJ intersects the divisor DJ with multiplicity MJ. So the skin you see is only a monoid, it's not a group, right? Can you say what? I didn't understand the remark. The, the SKUZ, that's only a monoid. It's, a, it's not an abelian group. Uh, it's just a set. It's just a set. You don't, okay, you do not discuss anything but uh, addition or anything. Okay. It's only a set. set. Yeah. Only it's the in, integral point uh, correspond to the vertex in the dual complex of the skeleton. Ah, the integer points. They are just the integer points. Integer points in the dual. So here we are in the log Calabria case, and the uh, the essential skeleton is a cone. It's a cone complex. A cone complex. I see. Yes, and every piece, every like piece of the cone complex is just uh, modeled over the like a quadrant of the, how do you call it? R, in Rn, this quadrant in Rn. Oh, I see. And the integer points just corresponds, uh, correspond to the integer points there. Uh -huh. But there is an intrinsic uh, characterization in terms of non-Archimedean geometry. I see. So each, each of these, uh, uh, you take a non-Archimedean geometry and then each of these uh, uh, skeleton correspond to a cone complex, right? The, the essential skeleton, essential Yeah, essential here, the essential skeleton is a simplicial cone complex. I see, okay, thanks. Um, yeah, thank you for the question. Yeah. So, so that's what we count, just the very simple rational curves. And of course, uh, uh, when we say we count that, we'd better prove that uh, uh, the number is a finite number. So for this, uh, it's also very simple. Here is the precise formulation uh, in order to count things. We just uh, consider the space of maps. We let H P beta be the space of maps from P1 with uh, uh, marked points, small P1 to Pn. We add one more marked point, um, auxiliary marked point. And we consider maps from P1 with n plus one marked points to Y, such that uh, it satisfies the order, uh, the intersection pattern. We ask that every PJ meets the interior of the divisor DJ with given order MJ, no other intersections with the boundary, and the curve class is beta. And then, uh, using deformation theory of curves, we can prove that if we consider the map phi from our moduli space of uh, maps to m0 n plus one times u, uh, where the first factor is uh, taking domain. So when we take domain, we get p1 with n plus one marked points. So we get an, a point in M0 N plus one. And the second factor uh, takes uh, evaluation at the point S. So, so using the deformation theory of curves, we can show that uh, this map phi is finite et al over a Zariski dense open of the target. Um, yeah, so that's a really good situation. Then we can now precisely define the count of rational curves associated eta p beta to be simply the degree of the finite et al map. Uh, so that's the count. Uh, simply, uh, in short, it's just the count of this red 
uh, curves. Uh, either a higher genus count similar to this one? Uh, that's a very good question. So I'm actually thinking about higher genus counts too. Uh, for the moment, they were not considered by uh, gross hacking keel. Higher genus counts are more complicated because first the virtual dimension is uh, mm. not good, so one has to fix some further class, mm. like Psi class or Lambda class, and then the the meaning is also less obvious. Mm. But uh, for the moment, let's consider uh, rational curves. It, it is the related to the relative. It is a relative or different Re log uh, log of Is that Yeah. It. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, you know, log of witten theory is uh, defined using virtual fundamental class. Yeah. And uh, of course, I mean, it, it feels like logogram of Witten theory should uh, compute the number I just uh, described. Uh -huh. But uh, but to prove it, it's not uh, obvious because uh, logogram of Witten theory is defined in in a sophisticated way. Uh -huh. So to to prove whether it's equal to our to the numbers here, uh -huh. uh, I think in dimension two maybe uh, Travis Mendel considered this question. In higher dimensions, I don't know whether they are the same. I see. Uh -huh. mm. So is this a space compactified are you, or you're really not counting any stable curves, just actual curves? Yeah, so here I proved that the map is um, uh, finite et al, and then we count, uh, we get a number. And of course, uh, if, in the theory, we use all these stable maps and so on. So, so, and the point is that we showed that the modular space is smooth. And furthermore, we don't need to consider the bubbles. So here we say it's finite et al over Zariski dense open. But over other places, you can get all kinds of stable maps. Okay, so that Zarisk dense includes only the smooth curves. Yeah, and all we want is just a degree. So if, so if we compute the degree at the generic point, it's good. Okay. Uh, yeah, but uh, other places we get all sorts of uh, bubbles. So, so in the definition of HP uh, beta, you don't have a requirement of what the image of F at S, whether that's inside of a U or not. But in your in the definition of the phi, you want the image to be in U. In U, and not only in U, but a very general point in U. Okay, good. Thanks. It's a uh, yeah. It if I restate using stable maps, then it's just a degree in terms of Gromov with uh, like count. I think one of my colleagues is working on that problem. Just try to uh, in, in reinterpret everything by using a log grammar with theory. Yeah. Yeah. I, for, of course, uh, if, um, but here it's uh, just so simple. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because yeah. here the modular H is a smooth, right? The modular H. Yeah, uh, it's a smooth, it's finite et al over something yeah. smooth. So and, it's smooth yeah, over it, here. That's defined as a degree. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it's just a very simple count. They are called a naive count. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, I mean, we showed that these naive counts are correct counts for mirror symmetry. Mm -hmm. And uh, then for logogram of Witten, if they are supposed to be correct, then one should prove that the logogram of Witten counts uh, coincide with the counts uh, we consider here. Yeah, that's what the more gross believes. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we get our count. It depends on the choice of integer points in the skeleton and also curve class. Mm -hmm. Now the natural question is that 
when we vary uh, all the choice of integer points in the skeleton and the curve class, we get infinitely many numbers. And we want to study relations between these numbers. Mm -hmm. So in order to study the relations, we just assemble all these numbers into generating series uh, in most uh, uh, straightforward way. So first we assemble all the curve classes beta. We just consider R to be the monoid ring of the cone of curves uh, over Z. In other words, it's just the direct sum of copies of Z uh, over all possible curve classes. And we write the basis elements as Z to the power beta. And then um, we also assemble all the integer points in the skeleton. So for this, we consider again, just the direct sum of uh, all uh, of uh, direct sum over all integer points in the skeleton of copies of R. So it's a free R module with basis with the basis in uh, integer points in the skeleton. And we denote the basis elements as by theta p. So just uh, take direct sum of everything. And uh, we define so-called Frobenius form, uh, which is uh, goes from a product n to r, which is just a r multilinear map that sends the basis elements theta p1 to theta pn to the sum over all curve classes of the counts associated to p1 to pn and the beta. So nothing is happening here, uh, nothing special. All we do for the Frobenius form is just uh, putting together all possible, um, all possible uh, counts. And uh, I also remarked that uh, you don't need to worry the sum is finite. So now let me state the main theorem of uh, this talk, which we call uh, the Frobenius structure theorem. Uh, we assume U contains an open split algebraic torus, then the following hold. So first we prove that uh, the, this Frobenius form is non-degenerate. And the second, we prove there exists a unique finitely generated commutative associative uh, R algebra structure on A, on our free module A, such that uh, this theta zero, the basis element theta zero is uh, the unit. And if we consider this Frobenius form, evaluated on A1 to AN, it's equal to the trace of the product. Trace means we take coefficient of uh, the base element theta zero. So the second point says that we get algebra, uh, algebra structure on the module, on the R module. So once we have the algebra structure, uh, we call it a mirror algebra and uh, we can take a spec. So we get A was R module. So when we take a spec, we get a map from spec A to spec R and we call this a mirror family. And the third part says that uh, if we consider TD, the split torus with co-character group generated by the irreducible components of D, then we have a natural equivariant action of this uh, torus on our mirror family. And finally, we can say uh, more about uh, 
uh, properties of this family. For the moment, it's very abstract because uh, A is just some uh, existence of some algebra structure and we consider spec A to spec R, but uh, we can show that it's actually very close to a family of uh, log color BR. So for this, uh, let's base change to Q, uh, characteristic zero. Mm. So we base change to Q and we can show that it's a flat family of affine varieties of the same dimension as U. Uh, they, put, they have uh, reasonable singularities. So they are Gorenstein, semi-log canonical, has a trivial canonical class. Mm, just if you don't know or don't remember the definitions, just means the singularities are okay. And the generic fiber is log canonical and log color BR. So in short, it says that we obtain, the mirror family we obtain is actually a family of log color BR uh, with reasonable singularities. So this is the theorem. And now uh, let me make some remarks. So uh, if you remember, uh, I began the talk by the motivation of mirror symmetry from mirror symmetry about mirror of uh, Calabria or log Calabria. So here uh, you see that our mirror algebra depends not only on our log Calabria but also on the compactification. And if you are not happy about compactification, we can actually remove the dependence of our mirror algebra on the compactification by forgetting all curve classes. So there is a way to set all curve classes to zero, forget about the curve class, and then we get something independent of compactification. So we get something really uh, mirror to the log color BR. And, uh, uh, next, I want to remark on our assumption that U contains a torus. Uh, this assumption always holds in dimension two, but not always in dimension greater or equal to three. Sorry, can I ask a question? Sorry, sure. going back a little bit. So, what if you want to do the opposite? What if you want to start with to build a mirror to a compact thing? Right? Then you pick a divisor inside it, and then you do your construction. But then it depends on the divisor we pick. So the mirror to compact scene, the notion of uh, in mirror symmetry is a bit different. One gets, uh, uh, but you, I mean, uh, of course we can do like this, but eventually it's uh, it's just the uh, two different ways of. Uh, uh, presenting things, I think. Mm. I think it's better to think of it as a mirror of the interior. It's log Calabria. Yeah, it, is, it's, it looks like it's a kind of a special definition of what do you call mirror to, to the log Calabria. It cannot be, you know, like put quotation marks at the beginning and at the end, mirror dual to log Calabria. It's not uh, something which compatible with, with compact Calabria mirror symmetry. And <coughs> anyway, there is no definition of what does mirror mean. Mirror symmetry is like a philosophy. Something for which is true is the mirror, right? <laughs> I don't know what is, if you know, I, I don't know what is the definition of mirror, mirror yeah, symmetry. Not, not <laughs> I mean, typically there is no really like a, yeah. you know, strict, like a strict definition. Yeah, I think there is no definition. It's more like, because it's a physics. So, I mean, there is, it, it will take us too, too far. There is a definition of mirror pairs. And so you can then propose uh, not just a single X, but some pair and check 
that they mirror dual, like in the sense of homological mirror symmetry. There are some suggestions of how to construct mirror duals to compact Calabi-Yaws, and this is um, how uh, um, this whatever scattering diagram, so whatever you will mention that started with. You take the maximal degeneration, then you take the mirror dual over the open part, like in the sense of SYZ, then you correct it by wall crossing, and conjecturally there is a unique way to, to complete it to, to the full, uh, to the complete Calabi-Yau. Uh, so, and of course there is physics, which kind of, for physicists it's not a question what is a mirror dual, they understand it very well. So then yeah, so here, what I'm explaining here is exactly what Yan mentioned about the idea, like how to construct a mirror in the compact case uh, using scattering diagram and so on. And here it's, it's like we are doing it in the log Calabria case. It's exactly motivated by all the scattering diagram and all these ideas. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll comment. I don't know whether it's relevant because I don't know what will be next. But if you have this SYZ vibration, mm -hmm. and if you uh, uh, if it's vibration and you have an embedding of of the base of SYZ vibration yes. to this integrable system, you can uh, you can consider home and the Fukaya category from this base to itself. Sure. And in the some kind of lucky cases, uh, you get just an algebra, not a DG algebra, but associative yes. algebra, which kind of defines you d some sort of mirror. And uh, since yeah, you I have think just uh, an algebra, it's very. I nice. think people considered it in some simple two dimensional cases. Yeah, and, but here I'm. Uh, here we are, I'm presenting a purely algebraic approach without uh, going through symplectic geometry. And it's a bit more robust, I think. Yeah, yeah. it just comments for, for people mm -hmm. like, like Lina who likes. Yes. Uh, okay, okay, go ahead. Yeah, so I remark that uh, the, the assumption that you contain the torus, uh, it plays two roles. First, it allows a degeneration of the mirror family to a toric variety, which is crucial for our proof of point one and four. And the second is that it also greatly simplifies the enumerative part of the theory. Without that assumption, I need a more sophisticated theory, which uh, will still take some time. Um, but we conjecture that uh, we should, we the theorem may still hold without the assumption. And I explained the theorem, but I didn't, uh, haven't yet explained what's the original conjecture of gross hacking and Keel. So the original conjecture of gross hacking and Keel is a variant of this theorem, which was stated uh, by a logogram of Witten invariants, instead of naive counts of rational curves as a one you one mentioned. Um, so, so Gross Siebert, they have, a, they are working on mirror construction uh, in greater generality using the theory of uh, punctured log curves. And for the moment, it's not evident whether their log invariance will coincide with ours. Um, but since we have proved the Frobenius uh, structure conjecture in that in in that setting, then somehow uh, it shows that the naive counts are the correct uh, are the correct invariants, and the logarithm of which invariants, if they should work, then they must also be equal to the naive counts uh, above. So let me explain, now uh, let me explain how to construct the structure constants of the mirror algebra, how to get the mirror algebra. That's the key point of uh, our theorem. 
is the construction of the algebra structure on the module. Um, in other words, how do how are the pro products defined in the mirror algebra? So uh, let's recall that. Uh, yeah, so we we are given some uh, integer points in the essential skeleton, and we write the product in the mirror algebra A as follows. Um, so the product, it's an element in A, and uh, since we just recall what was A. Since A is a, a free R module, uh, with the basis uh, here, integer points in the skeleton. So we can write it as a sum over all integer points of the basis element theta q with some coefficient in r. And the recall that r was uh, just a direct sum over all curve classes. So we can again write it as sum over all curve classes of uh, the basis elements z to the r with some integer coefficient and we denote this integer coefficient by chi and they are just structure constants. So, so in the end, to construct the algebra structure, we just need to define these integer integers and we just need to construct the structure constants. Um, so the idea to construct the the structure constants uh, is inspired by Kantasevich homological mirror symmetry. Um, uh, we would like to define the structure constants chi as counts of some holomorphic disks. Uh, note that the disks do not make sense in algebraic geometry. So now we go to analytic geometry. And the first choice is, of course, a complex analytic geometry. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't really work uh, in full generality because when we count disks, uh, we get so-called complicated curved A-infinity structures. But we want numbers here, uh, integer numbers. And it's not clear how to get uh, these numbers directly. Uh, from A infinity structures. And the solution that we use uh, is, uh, is to use non-Archimedean analytic geometry. So it's based on my previous works. And then we can actually uh, have a very simple and a direct definition of the structure constants chi by counting non-Archimedean curves. Uh, I will explain it in a second, what non-Archimedean curves we count. And the definition is uh, uh, now simple and direct, but uh, to prove the properties of these counts, it's still, it's quite sophisticated. sophisticated. Um, so now let me explain uh, what are the non-Archimedean things we count. So first, uh, what, uh, uh, where is the non-Archimedean uh, uh, thing here? Uh, so to, to use non-Archimedean geometry, we do the following construction. Uh, we equip our base field K with the trivial absolute value, uh, which is just map from K to zero one. The, the absolute value of any non-zero element is one and the, the absolute value of zero is zero. And this is a non-Archimedean absolute value, meaning that it satisfies the non-Archimedean triangular inequality. Then K just becomes a non-Archimedean field uh, by this trivial, abs trivial absolute value. So even if we are working over the field of complex numbers, we just ignore uh, the usual complex uh, norm and we work with this trivial, trivial norm. Then 
we can consider Bayer-Kovitz identification with respect to this trivial uh, norm, and we obtain a k-analytic space. And, and the theory of NORAC median geometry is somehow analogous to complex analytic geometry. Um, it, it's uh, quite, it's a, it's a now well-developed theory. And uh, uh, if you don't know about it, you can think of it as some analog of complex uh, geometry. So, but let me just recall that as a set, this non-Archimedean analytic space. And it, probably it's not a question. So, uh, so as I said, this uh, analytification consists of pairs, cosine and nu, where cosine is a scheme theoretical point, and the nu is an absolute value on the residual field of cosine, extending the given absolute value on k. So, so we see in particular that the divisorial the integer points in the essential skeleton are part of the identification. And I think many of you know what are essential skeleton. So the essential skeleton also embeds here. And uh, by our assumption that uh, U contains some torus, and in this case, the integer points in the essential skeleton is very easy to compute. It's just equal to the co-character lattice of the torus. So recall that our goal is to define the structure constant chi, uh, P1 to Pn Q gamma, by counting non-Archimedean analytic disks. And let me explain what are the non-Archimedean analytic disks that we count? So heuristically, we count uh, non-Archimedean analytic disks as follows, so such red disks. Uh, heuristically, we count disks in the identification of Y, satisfying the following properties. Uh, first, the disk delta intersects uh, every divisor dj with order mj, just as uh, our definition for the Frobenius form. And the second, we ask the boundary of our disk to map to the point q, yes, q uh, in, in the target. And let me just uh, comment that in our Archimedean geometry, the boundary of a closed unit disk is a single point. And the third, we ask that the derivative of our map at the boundary is equal to Q. Um, we can make sense of it using uh, some theory of uh, skeletal curves uh, that we developed in our paper. Um, for the moment, you can in, uh, understand it in the heuristic way. Uh, and does it mean that you kind of consider uh, this um, sort of uh, in Archimedean case, I would say C, C star, which is defined by the neighborhood of this Q uh, and which kind of ends up to some one parameter subgroup in your embedded torus, something like that. Yeah, in the Archimedean picture, it somehow corresponds to like what happens uh, as a homology class in the fiber. But uh, here it's some sort of tropical picture. So we, we know that what happens as a homology class in the fiber, we can also see it as a weight of a tropical curve. But uh, but what we need to be careful is that uh, here, uh, the we, using the theory of skeletal curves, one we can actually show that uh, somehow the 
some part of uh, our disk actually maps into the essential skeleton. And then the near Q, it's really just an interval and it really makes sense to take a derivative. And in the end, we ask also the class of the disk is good. And the class of disk in some limiting sense is equal to the class gamma. So that's heuristically what we want to count. And again, with a better, whenever we want to count something, we'd better show at least the number is finite. The count is well defined. Um, so in order to give a more precise mathematical formulation, uh, we, um, uh, we need to work a bit more. Um, because we have some trouble here, uh, unlike the situation of counting closed curves, uh, here the space of such disks, not only the number of disks is infinite, but the space of such disks is infinite dimensional. And uh, we want to extract a finite number from this infinite dimensional space. And the idea uh, that we use uh, based on my previous works is that we can reduce to finite dimension by imposing a regularity condition on the boundary uh, of our uh, curve called, we call it a toric tail condition. So we impose one more condition. We ask that by analytic continuation at the boundary, our disk extends to a closed rational curve such that uh, this extended part, which we call the tail, such that the tail hits some divisor on the other side uh, with some given order. And the furthermore, we ask that the punctured tail, tail minus the hitting point, should lie inside the torus. Uh, it's just an extra technical condition. And the good news is that uh, combining all the, these intuitive heuristic conditions with this extra technical toric tail condition, we obtain a finite, finite counts of non-Archimedean disks. So we really get finite numbers. Finite, not only finite, but uh, really non-negative integers. Um, in the note, I also wrote the precise mathematical formulation of all the ideas, all the heuristic conditions, uh, but let us skip it here. Yeah, so in the end, the precise definition is again, just the length of some uh, zero dimensional scheme if we pass to algebraic closure, it's really a naive count, cardinality of some set. So we can show that the structure constants uh, by defined by counting these non-Archimedean disks, uh, they are well-defined, independent of many choices that we make. And furthermore, the sums in the multiplication rule, they are finite sums, so we defined the structure constant. And the next we prove that the sums are finite sums and they give the finitely generated commutative associative R algebra structure on the mirror algebra A in the Frobenius structure zero. Um, yeah, so this is roughly how we construct uh, the algebra structure Sorry, and uh, Okay, ask a question. Sorry about that. Sure. Oh yeah. So I I'm kind of curious. Uh, is there any like a technicality in proving uh, the associativity of this ring structure? Uh, how to prove associativity? Yeah, like is it just a tr sort of like a trivial, relatively trivial result, or it, it requires uh, 
some like a very technical stuff like uh, so did, didn't i explain at igs the also maybe i didn't explain but uh, it follows from what i explained at i at IHS, I explained the, like all the non-trivial parts okay. of the story. Then associativity follows from these non-trivial uh, statements. Yeah, but kind of for those who was not, wasn't able to attend uh, lectures at IHS, which were like about 3 a.m. in the morning in Kansas, uh, yeah, uh, typically when you prove associativity in Fleur theory, you need to consider some degenerate, some compactification, some broken. Yes, that, yes exactly. So here again, we have to consider different uh, degenerations, like according to the, uh, like we vary the modulus, uh, consider degenerations, and for that, the naive counts are, it's, we should work a little bit more than naive counts. We have to prove properness and things like that. Uh, yeah, and also kind of maybe a small question, but I kind of lost because you work with a skeleton and uh, after your tail condition or whatever, basically it looks like it's a tropical count, but probably it is not. Uh, it, it uh, it's it's a tropical count if it's a toric variety, but here containing a torus is very far from being a toric variety. Like any blow up of toric variety, uh, is also fits in our context. Then the count is is not it cannot be read from the combinatorial picture. Uh, you say that the count cannot be read, like in the toric case, you can lift kind of tropical curve. The toric to case we know. One, but yeah. here you cannot. Yeah. The the toric case we have a Mikalkin like multiplicity formulas. Yeah, exactly. yeah, but it's over complex numbers. But uh, over non-Archimedean field, you can lift whatever you want. You have. Uh, in, yeah, in, in our over our Archimedean field, the Mikalkin multiplicity formula also works, and uh, but it, they, it only works in the toric case. Yeah, that's what, what I mean. That you and have some you see, uh, I will just explain in a minute uh, the application to cluster algebras, oh, okay. and uh, we we get uh, all the everything for cluster algebras. So it really contains. Uh, and uh, all these counts, they are not at all uh, toric. Mm. So we get all, I mean, everything, all the complicated scattering diagrams are part of this story. So in so, your, can I ask a question? It is really not immediate count, right? Not immediate count. Uh, not or algebraic, they are here, they are the similar. Okay. But not, oh, okay. Because by Gaga principle, uh, in, when we are in this projective case, non-Archimedean and algebraic, they are somehow uh, the same. But we, you, we need a non-Archimedean geometry. At some, uh, it doesn't mean that we don't need to use non-Archimedean geometry, although eventually the counts are algebraic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let me uh, just- Before you move on to a different thing, I so just mm -hmm. want to so in your in this formula, if you move up, each individual chi with all those declarations is independent of the choices. Yeah, each independent each chi is a well-defined number. Okay, so that's why you're saying it's better than counting disks. Like uh, it's really counts of disks. No, I mean, better than counting like holomorphic disks in actual. Complex. Yeah, here. Uh, Non-Archimedean is really essential because uh, we are counting disks like in non-Archimedean SYZ vibration okay. here. And uh, you know the complex SYZ vibration is always a bit difficult to work with. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so let me just quickly say what we have as applications for our construction. So first, uh, 
we can apply it to cluster algebras because uh, cluster algebras, cluster variety always contains a torus. So it fits very well into our setting. Um, we consider so-called Fokker-Gontroff skew-symmetric X cluster variety, assuming uh, its global sections is smooth. Um, we can also deal with the singular case, but uh, for simplicity, we assume it's smooth. And also we assume that the cluster variety is uh, close to an affine variety which is almost always the case. For example, uh, double Bruja cells in semi-simple complex Lie groups satisfy this. And now this is a nice log color BR uh, containing a torus. So we can apply our Frobenius structure theorem to this log color BR and we obtain our mirror algebra. We just forget the curve classes, so it's independent of any compactification. We obtain a mirror algebra associated to the log color BR. And recall that in the paper of Gross, Hacking, Kiel, Kondosevich, they also have a mirror algebra defined in a combinatorial way. Let's denote it by mirror X, mirror X. Then the following hold. So we can show that their structure constants, their combinatorially defined structure constants are equal to our geometrically defined structure constants. So we get a comparison between our mirror algebra and their mirror algebra. And furthermore, uh, we show that the mirror algebras are independent of choice of cluster structure they are uniquely determined by the variety U. <coughs> so this has uh, several <coughs> nice consequences. Uh, the comparison theorem, it allows us to prove several combinatorial conjectures of Gross, Hacking, Q and Kondosevich. Their constructions are combinatorial, but uh, they have, they, but they have geometric, uh, they have several constructions, uh, several conjectures motivated by heuristic, uh, uh, underlying heuristic pictures. But the, comp but uh, their combinatorial method uh, falls short to prove the conjectures. And now we have a geometric interpretation from which we can deduce some of their conjectures. Uh, first, um, uh, first, uh, this it's already known in GHKK, but uh, let me remark that our naive counts are always non-negative integers. So this gives a much more conceptual proof of the positivity of structure constants and of the coefficients of the scattering functions. And this implies uh, positivity in the Laurent phenomena for cluster algebras. And the second, we get a proof of the gross hacking kiel kondosevich broken line convexity conjecture using the geometry of non-Archimedean analytic curves. And then maybe let, since I don't have much time, I, I'm already over time. Uh, I just uh, say quickly that it helps to remove some technical assumption and also sh show that the mirror algebra is independent of choice of cluster structure. And we get uh, some explanation of change of scattering diagram on the mutation. Some of them are conjectured in GHKK. Um, so finally, we have another application to the moduli space of Calabial pairs uh, and uh, maybe let me just uh, stop here. And since I have sent the notes, if you are interested, uh, you can look at the notes. Um, so thank you very much for your attention. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Tonya. Uh, 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 so questions? Yep, 
um, quickly, briefly describe this um, this flat bill pairs um, as a part two? Uh, uh, maybe since it's not the question, it's a continuation of the talk. Let's concentrate on on questions, which probably will be shorter. Uh, okay, uh, so people who have questions, uh, can you? Kind of, you can unmute yourself <laughs> as everyone did and ask. Okay, let me ask a question. <laughs> okay. And uh, so the, but the associativity of this algebra A, and that, that was complex. How about the commutativity? Is that something also? Um, uh, more commutativity is uh, more, or more obvious. Yeah, commutativity is direct, follows direct from our. Uh, construction of structure constants because uh, mm -hmm. uh, the structure constants is given by the counts of such holomorphic disks mm -hmm. and all the di they are symmetric okay. so they are on equal footing and if we permute them the number doesn't change associativity is it's, much it's more, more, more sophisticated involved. yes and Tony, and I somehow confused because I asked you whether it's a tropical count. You said that it's not, but then you said that the algebra is isomorphic to the one of gross uh, hacking and Kiel. Yeah, but uh, gross hacking Kiel conservative the count. It's not really so simple. It's not a count. It's produced by the scattering or wall crossing structure. But it's not I, I, counting something. Ah, you mean the, okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so kind of in your definition, it's manifest that the numbers are integers because you do not have this virtual fundamental classes. It's you just count. Yeah, here I'm really counting something. And in GHKK, or as in 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 your paper with uh, Maxim about the K3 surface, like where the idea was uh, invented the first time, uh, you use the wall crossing structure uh, to produce these numbers, and uh, but they are not counting something. Yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, pro uh, I, uh, I think that you, sh you have as a byproduct this wall crossing automorphisms. Uh, ah, yes, yes. Uh, actually, so here I didn't explain, but uh, in our paper, we can also get wall crossing automorphisms using counts of something, but we, are, we no longer count disk and we count cylinders to get wall crossing uh, transformations. Uh, also, uh, you know, since you mentioned this cluster varieties for and Goncharov. Of course, uh, the main example for them, not just uh, double brio cells, but it's local systems on, on curves. And if I remember in that story, uh, they really have the potential. I mean, it's, they have some additional function on, on, on on the integer points of the skeleton. And in your uh, story, it did not... Ah, so in my story, yeah. I mean, I explained the mirror of uh, log Calabria. And then uh, we can also consider compactifications of the log Calabria and also super potentials on the mirror. Oh. And uh, you have some explicit formulas for this super potential in terms yeah, of... Yeah, the super potential will just be some of some theta functions. This is uh, our theta function mm -hmm. basis. So we consider super potential, which is some of theta functions corresponding to the compactification, like the divisor of the compactification. Oh, okay, yeah, it, it fits. So they, it also mm -hmm. fit into the story. Uh, and uh, no one on the symplectic geometry side tried to kind of to compare your answer with homological mirror symmetry predictions or somebody. Uh, uh, 
Uh, I think in the two dimensional case, probably Pascal F. James Pascal F. He has some works in the two dimensional case. I think the major difficulty in symplectic geometry is to define like the associated Foucault categories. Well, it looks like it should be partially wrapped Foucault because you have some compactification by divisors at, at, at infinity. Mm -hmm. And so then this wrapping should play a role. Okay. So I will more, be, yeah. Actually, I will be much happier. So here we have like a completely algebraic construction of mirror, which is if we ignore these disks and we go back to the Frobenius conjecture, it's really just determined by the, by the Frobenius form, which is counts of these closed rational curves. So here the mirror is just determined by counts of these curves. And then for mirror symmetry statement, I think it's it also much, it will be great if we have also purely algebraic mirror symmetry statement. Uh, well, it depends on whether you like symplectic topology or not. So because there will be objections to pure algebraic definition. But uh, there is kind of example, which even before this gross hacking kill, which we discussed with Maxim, it's an example of, of the uh, Hitchin uh, uh, complex integrable system. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mentioned uh, during your talk, that you take the base of Hitchin integrable system and yeah. you look for the whole thing as a real symplectic manifold. You take just mm -hmm. a real part of the holomorphic mm -hmm. symplectic form. And in the appropriate Foucault category, you consider home from the zero section from the base to itself. Mm -hmm. Then you see many things which you mentioned. So you see integer points. Sure. Yes. The base has an integer affine structure. Uh, and you have automatically the basis and by mirror symmetry this home, it's an algebra because it's a holomorphic Lagrangian so all um, yeah. self-intersection points have the same index. So then you have an algebra which defines some, let's call it mirror dual. Yes. It does not look as a cluster variety but the point is that uh, from the very beginning, it's hyperkeller. If you work with uh, log uh, surfaces, complex mm -hmm. surfaces also have symplectic, uh, complex symplectic structure, which means that you can think of this total space of a Hitchin system, in fact, as a sort of a character variety in a different complex structure when yes. you rotate it by 90 degrees. And so this way to compute the algebra, you do it in the in the wrong complex structure. But mm -hmm. the mirror uh, which you construct, it's a mirror for this character variety. And that's this character variety with some additional data. It's basically what Fock and Goncharov. This is a cluster variety, X, X, cluster mm -hmm. X variety. I see. So that's sort of a symplectic topological way to define I, your algebra AU or whatever, it's analog, but by uh, working in the different complex structure, rotating the complex structure, then doing floor theory there. I see. Then, yeah, okay. So, I see. Uh, okay, more questions? Yeah, hey, Tony, I have a question on your last part, actually. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so the, the, for the clavial pair, so it yeah. seems to define a closed sub, uh, sub variety or sub stack in the uh, clutch of a variant moduli, right? Yeah, in the KSBA. Yeah, KSBA. Mm -hmm. oh, what's, what's this theta uh, uh, coming from? I forgot, sorry. This, in this... KSBA, we, also, we have a theta. 
Yeah. Oh, this theta is the case B, but the E is your E, right? This the. I mean, the divider E equal to E1 plus EN, that's the, your collateral pair. Oh, so, so in, in KSB stable pair, mm -hmm. we have a variety together with a polarization, uh, like a divisor, ample divisor. Yeah. Yeah. So here we have triples because we are considering the log color BR. Yes. So we have uh, like uh, something plus. Uh, plus uh, some uh, anti-canonical divisor. Mm -hmm. And this KXE is a log color BL pair. Oh, I see, yes. And the it's theta- like YD. And the theta is uh, some ample divisor we need in order to compactify the moduli space. Okay, yes, okay. Because other, without the theta, we cannot compactify the moduli space. Yeah, then in order to embed it into the KSBA, Modular space, mm -hmm. we just take uh, E plus some small multiple of theta. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the, the, the ample divisor in KSBA modular space will be our anti canonical divisor plus some small multiple of theta. So you prove this conjecture for some surface, you say? We prove it uh, in the two dimensional case. Oh, all the two dimensional. In higher dimensional case, the singularities, we, we are still working on it in order to estimate the singularities. Uh, more questions? So last chance. Uh, well, if there are no more questions, so thank you, Tony, for a very interesting talk. So very, very Thank you. Yeah.